uh, both OSGO branding and location tech branding. And just a little bit of background about myself. Uh, my name's Jody Garnett. I'm a technical lead with Boundless, which is uh, kind of one of the leading OSGO uh, uh, software providers. Um, in terms of open source, I'm a project lead on the UDIG project, uh, on the GeoTools project, and on the GeoServer project. Has anyone here like uh, used UDIG before? We've got a couple people. Anyone used GeoServer before? Has anyone actually read the GeoTools docs like ever? All right, excellent. That makes me happy. Uh, with the Eclipse Foundation, uh, I'm on the steering committee for the Location Tech Working Group. Uh, and I'm also the chair of the Location Tech uh, Technology Project. And I'll explain what that is in a, in a moment. With the uh, OSGEO Foundation, I'm chair of the Incubation Committee, and I'm the project officer for GeoTools. That's why I had my question. Just put your microphone to your shirt. It's, uh, we're getting a lot of noise here. Oh, sorry, it slipped down. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Enough about me. Let me uh, just quickly thank uh, my employer, Boundless. Uh, Boundless works with both OSGEO, with a lot of our core Open Geo Suite components, GeoServer and QGIS and Open Layers. Uh, and then we're also starting to work with Location Tech, and we're really enjoying that process. Initially, we're, uh, we're working with Location Tech on the GeoGig project, which some of you may have done a workshop on Tuesday, uh, and then the GeoScript project as well. Um, yeah, just to repeat myself, Phosphor NA is uh, co hosted by both OSGeo and Loca Location Tech. And my motivation for this talk comes a little bit after the Phosphor G event in Portland. There was a lot of questions on OSGEO discuss list on what is location tech? What is Eclipse doing in our industry? What does this all mean? So I hope to answer a few of those questions over the course of this talk. In terms of Phosphor G, uh, I'm not sure I need to explain it to this audience. Phosphor G is a, an international open source uh, well, it's a, it's a brand that we use to uh, run conferences internationally. Uh, and then we also have regional conferences such as this one here today. And I'm just going to skip into Location Tech here. So Location Tech is a working group. Uh, so the Eclipse Foundation is one of the big open source software foundations. And they're starting to set up working groups to look at specific industries like aerospace and automotive. And Location Tech is the working group that's looking into GIS and uh, location technologies. Uh, the Eclipse Foundation is a nonprofit organization, so much like OSGEO. It is supported by its members. And in the context of Eclipse, the membership consists of both individuals, but also organizations. Um, and they're really focused on commercial friendly uh, open source. Uh, so here's just a couple of the working groups the Eclipse Foundation uh, has going on. Uh, you can, saw there was a track earlier in, in the week on Internet of Things. Uh, Location Tech and the Eclipse Foundation uh, really uh, focus on being a, like a full service foundation. So they'll uh, help a project out with all the infrastructure and uh, build facilities. They have a, an intellectual property uh, management team that can go through and do a lot of the code reviews and so forth for you. They also step into areas of government governance so they can help your project figure out how to uh, run your project in an open and public manner. And they have uh, events such as the Location Tech Tour more focused on marketing and community building. Uh, in terms of Location Tech, here are the members uh, at, uh, at the time of writing. Up at the top level, we've got strategic members. These are organizations that have paid a considerable amount of money in order to have a seat on the steering committee and decide uh, what actions uh, the Location Tech um, working group is, uh, is taking in the year ahead. We also have participating members. This is a, a lower price tier for organizations that are interested, and several of these groups will be uh, involved in the steering committee. And then we also have guests that have been invited to take part in Location Tech. So you can see that uh, OSGEO and a, a couple um, universities are at that tier. 
So just in terms of what membership means, um, in term, this is kind of a little bit how Location Tech is run. So we have a steering committee that has a range of representation. There's an architecture committee, and that's kind of interesting um, in that we can look at the open source spatial software that's available and identify holes in the stack um, that we could either recruit a new project to fill that hole, or we could actually look at investing and setting up a new project. Um, we also have a marketing committee, and, um, and uh, depending on what kind of uh, member you are, you'll get access to, well, committers get access to the uh, um, GitHub repositories uh, and the build infrastructure and so on. Any questions on that one? It's a little bit of a foreign model for those coming from OSGO. Okay. In terms of structure, we have the top level technology committee. Uh, project. This is um, a project that the membership consists of all the project leads uh, of all the individual projects uh, inside Location Tech. Um, as the organization grows, we'll be setting up other top-level projects for libraries, applications, and processing. And you can see that our existing projects are kind of clustered into these categories on our website already. So I'm just going to go into some of the things which um, Location Tech is doing an excellent job of. So it's, uh, Location Tech is really doing an excellent job of public outreach. Uh, who here was involved in any of the Location Tech tour stops that happened worldwide? A couple people? Okay. Uh, so this is an event that's similar to Phosphor-G, but rather than taking everyone into a single location, um, we take the, the, the speakers and we take them to individual cities. So this allows us to hit more kind of a grassroots de uh, developer contact. And it's been very successful. It's now in its third year. Um, Location Tech is also very good at uh, collaborating with organizations such as uh, OSGO and OGC. Um, so just in 2013, we had a, a few number of um, tour stops. And in 2014, uh, we we're kind of a worldwide event. Another thing that's been excellent is uh, Eclipse staff. So uh, the Eclipse Foundation has paid staff on hand, and they're often able to take uh, a lot of the thankless tasks that we wouldn't otherwise be able to get uh, volunteers to do. Uh, so just a special thank to uh, Andrew Ross and Sharon from the IP team and Mike, who have been very good at, uh, at helping the initial batch of projects. There's a couple cautions with uh, Location Tech. So if you're considering joining, uh, taking your project to Location Tech, please keep this in mind. Um, the Location Tech working group is new to Eclipse. So many of the projects that are there are learning the ropes and seeing how things work. Um, so we're not quite always sure how to uh, add a new committer to the portal and so on. Um, also keep in mind that the incubation process is a fair bit of work. There is the IP team that's available to do all the code reviews, but you still have to go to the trouble of submitting your code uh, and all the dependencies you use. The other thing that's interesting, and this is an area where OSGO can help, uh, the Eclipse Foundation is new to our industry. So we're having fun explaining things like what the EPSG database is, for example. Um, and there's a couple areas where Location Tech's kind of currently in trouble. So with so many new projects joining at once, um, we're having to take some steps to ask projects to make use of the same version of dependencies just to cut down on the amount of, uh, of work that's needed for review. And we've, uh, rather than doing all the projects at once, we've started to form them up into a queue. So I think the GeoMesa project is currently at the head of the queue, and then GeoGig will be through next and so on. The other thing is that this incubation is a moving target. So often we can submit a version of, say, GeoTools, and it takes so long to get it reviewed that a new version of GeoTools comes out uh, before that review is complete. So this is what I hope is just early growing pains, but uh, it, it is an area where we're having difficulty right now. So just moving on to OSGeo, I might go more quickly through this. Here's my happy little OSGeo picture. So OSGO is also a nonprofit, uh, very much international at, at, in scope. And one thing I really like about it, it has strong outreach into the community with uh, an education committee, an open data committee, and so forth. 
Uh, the membership uh, or the structure of OSGO, we've got a board of nine members which is elected um, by our charter members. We add more charter members to the uh, foundation each year. In order to actually just join OSGO, um, it's very easy. Uh, it's a volunteer organization. Everyone is welcome. Uh, in terms of OSGO for new projects, um, OSGO is attractive for new projects. It is kind of a community of your peers. So you'll be able to understand the developers um, and we have mapping professionals on hand and so forth. And we have excellent assistance in terms of community outreach, local chapters and so forth. Um, in terms of the software foundation side of OSGO, we do offer relatively little protection. So our incubation process gives you a chance to check your source code over and declare in public that you've done a code review, but it's not like a, an independent uh, body doing a code review. Uh, OSGO also with the GRASS project <laughs> has a healthy uh, body of prior art in case you run into any patent troubles and so forth. Uh, this is an area where we tend to cooperate with other foundations. So OSGEO and projects in the past have reached out to the, to the Eclipse Foundation, to the Free Software Foundation, and so on, when we've encountered trouble with license conflicts or trademarks or so forth. So we're not a strict intellectual property uh, uh, engine. We, we reach out to other groups for this. We are spatial experts, so we really, uh, uh, we've got lots of mapping professionals on hand, and if you are just a developer, uh, we're in position to translate what the experts are saying. OSGO participation is free. Uh, we do have various sponsoring organizations. Uh, here's our sponsors cur uh, currently, so just tip of the hat to them. So in terms of OSGO, uh, OSGO is excellent with public outreach. Um, it's also really nice that any project is welcome to join uh, OSGO. They're, sorry, they're able to take part in our marketing efforts such as OSGO Live or our conferences. Uh, and we have easy collaboration. We've got uh, a line of communication over with, uh, open with location check in OGC. Uh, OSGO is excellent at community building. We've got a number of local chapters worldwide, and uh, this is kind of more like a, a user group kind of focus, uh, and they've been very instrumental to our success. And as I said, we also have a, an education committee, which is, uh, well, um, currently helping us uh, get along with academia. Uh, OSGO is also very flexible, so we've been able to keep up with the developer fashions. It was no problem for our projects to, to change from SVN to GitHub or so forth. Uh, also, all communication is uh, very public and transparent, so you can tell what's happening with OSGO. There's a couple cautions here. OSGO is so um, helpful to new projects that there's not actually much incentive to join. So uh, any of our marketing efforts, we've got a... Um, or OSGO Live, you can actually just take part in those. Um, for projects entering incubation, they get such a strong brand recognition when they enter in into incubation, there's very little incentive for them to finish. So we have projects that have sat in incubation for a number of years, making no visible progress. Um, the other difficulty here, and this is an awkward one, public communication is not suitable for, um, for all occasions. So occasionally, especially with incubation, we will run into legal issues or um, difficulties with the project that are best handled in private email and not on a public email list. And so that uh, friction can be a little bit difficult for OSGO. Uh, there is some areas where OSGO is having a tough time. OSGO right now is not set up to help onboard new projects. We do not have a... Uh, um, like a, a team that's really experienced in helping explain how to run an open source project. We've been initially been set up to um, support uh, open source projects that have all, were already successful. So this is uh, an area where we can certainly use improvement. The other thing that's difficult is as a volunteer organization, we're limited by uh, our, our membership. So we have OSGO projects that have been waiting sometimes for years in order to join the project or join the foundation. So I'm just going to quickly compare what kind of work you're looking at between the two foundations. 
So in terms of an OSGEO application, we raise a bug ticket. They're asking for a lot of relatively straightforward information, project name, license, and so forth. One thing that's interesting here is OSGEO is um, very much concerned about how viable your project is. So they're interested in how many users you've got, what types they are, what industries they are in, and so forth. Currently, uh, to enter incubation takes between one and six years, just because we're limited on our membership. So the Pi WPS um, project here, which is uh, the, the leader of that uh, project, is actually uh, on the OSGO board. And you can see that he's opened his request six years ago in order to join the foundation. Um, for location tech, the project proposal is a little bit more vo verbose, but it is also fairly straightforward. Uh, background, scope, uh, the license that you're going to use, any kind of legal issues like who owns the copyright. <coughs> One thing that's interesting is uh, they ask you to write down why you're interested in joining location tech, why location tech is a good fit for your project. The other thing that's interesting is part of that initial um, kind of onboarding process, they will do a trademark check um, uh, for your application. And one of the things that's interesting is they'll actually ask the trademark owner's permission, or if you're the trademark owner, they'll actually ask you to transfer the trademark to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, so that can be a little bit interesting for, uh, for teams to kind of give up uh, a name they might have spent some time building. One thing that's nice here is they've got a, a quick response time. So when was the S, uh, SF Curve project proposed? And when was it approved? Uh, three days later. And is that faster than six years? Uh, it's like pretty, pretty much faster. Okay, so I'm kind of pleased with that. Uh, in terms of OSGEO incubation, so what actually happens when you've uh, joined the OSGEO Foundation, uh, they're really relaxed about open source license. Anything that's a, an OS, OSI approved open source license, the Foundation's happy with. One check that's fairly difficult for projects is um, a check that the community is active and healthy. What we're looking for there is we're trying to ensure that there's some communication between your developer list and your user list, maybe some collaboration around the release time. We're also trying to look that your committers come from more than one organization. We don't want to take on a project that's run by one company because if they go under or, ch or change their their market, that uh, the users of that project would be left high and dry. So this can also be a, a relatively difficult ask for a lot of projects. In terms of source code, we actually ask the developers to check a manual, do a manual check of all their, their file headers and try and check where they got that source code from. For new projects, this can go by really quickly in a matter of days. But for some of the more established projects, it can take six months, three years, I'll have to ask the GVSIG project when I see them. Uh, in terms of a dependency check, and this uh, might amuse the location tech projects in the room, we actually just ask that uh, you list the dependencies and what license they're under. So we don't actually go through and check the source code of all the dependencies. We just want to know what the name of them are and uh, what license they have. Uh, anything else fun? We do actually ask that projects use version control in an issue tracker. I know that's kind of shocking. Um, and in governance, this is another fun one, uh, OSGL really emphasizes public governance. So we want to know, we want any decisions about your project to be made in public, not behind closed doors. And we want other volunteers to be able to take part in your uh, project. Um, either through like a request for change procedure, or maybe they'll take a number of years to earn commit status and be put on the steering committee. But we want your project to be open to outside participation. So here's an example of the uh, Pi CSW review. So you can see that they've gone through and they've checked all the different, um, all the different folders in their GitHub repository. And they've raised a number of issues during the course of their review and fixed them. I think if I remember this project, uh, they were getting a few issues around how to distribute um, OGC schemas, because they're not obviously under an open source license. So uh, for location tech incubation, um, remember that business friendly focused? 
uh, Location Tech only has a limited number of open source licenses that they're in position to support. Uh, so EPL and MIT and BSD and, and so on. Uh, uh, but we tend to steer cl clear from like the GPL license and so on. Uh, the trademark, the name, is uh, as part of incubation that gets assigned over to the foundation. The source code check is actually fairly interesting. So you submit your source code, um, even just with like a, a GitHub repository link, and the IP team will take a copy of that and go through and review all the source code um, for you. Uh, <coughs> And what's more tricky is they'll go through and review all the dependencies. So for every dependency, they'll download a, well, you'll download a copy of, a source, of the source code and give it to that IP team, and they will check all of that line by line. They'll actually go out and contact those projects and see if they are run in an organized fashion um, and, and ensure that those projects actually had the ability to release that source code. Uh, as open source, so it can be quite uh, extensive. One thing that's improving with Location Tech Incubation is they, uh, they're now in position to allow projects to work on GitHub, and behind the scenes, the foundation will keep a copy of the repository. Um, one thing that's really interesting is that Location Tech does have open governance, but all the projects follow the same, follow the same like procedures for uh, adding a member to the steering committee or adding a new committer to the point where it's been automated in a, in a portal. So on an OSGEO project, you might send an email and the, the steering committee would reply to that email with plus one and negative one and so on. Uh, the Eclipse uh, projects make use of a portal to do that kind of process. So here's an example of the kind of questions that are asked during an IP review. The name and the description and the version number you might expect, but there's a bunch of like choose your own adventure questions like uh, cryptography or the website URL. Um, and an interesting one there is you get to make a note of if the project you want to work with actually has contributor ag agreements or similar. Um, just a question for Tyler. Tyler, how long does it take you to fill in this for uh, a project? Five minutes, and how many have you done? Uh, 81. 81, fair enough. <laughs> I'm sure your first one took longer than five minutes. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Uh, the easy ones take less than five, um, and that's assuming that they have a clearly defined license, that they have a clearly defined distribution agreement, uh, because the worst case is that you look for all those things and never find them, uh, because you just look for yeah. So some of them take a long time. My worst one was some code in GeoTools that was uh, from like a newsgroup post. What is the open source license of a newsgroup post? I don't know. Uh, now, what's kind of fun here is it is a it is a software foundation, so the result here is a bugzilla ticket. So that IP team, you might consider very formal, but you communicate with them as a developer using uh, bug tickets. I'm just going to run through kind of how we're at with Location Tech Incubation. I'm kind of going okay here for time. So UDIG was, uh, well, UDIG is a project I'm the lead of, and I was really excited when Location Tech was formed because UDIG is Eclipse RCP based, and this is an opportunity to move UDIG closer to its target audience, which is uh, Eclipse developers. Uh, so we started our initial creation review in 2013. We actually started our code review almost right away. Um, and we actually got all our code issues resolved a little bit later in that year, so March, April, May, July, and we had 400 issues to work through. Out of all of that, most of it was just header confusion, looking up where source code came from, and we only had one or two classes which we had to rewrite. Uh, someone had pulled in a couple GPL classes which weren't uh, compatible with our license. Uh, one thing that's interesting is once we got that initial code review completed, we actually just sat on it because Location Tech at the time uh, only had their own internal Git repository, and we, uh, we waited until just this last February uh, after they've uh, made arrangements to work with GitHub. Uh, we've got 172 uh, five-minute dependencies to submit. Uh, right now, I've submitted 52 of them. 
uh, I'm kind of holding back and waiting for other teams like Tyler to, to do the work. So we're really enthusiastic uh, to be get moving closer to the Eclipse RCP, uh, you know, our target audience. We started a little bit early. The uh, location tech infrastructure wasn't quite set up yet. Uh, we're really glad to see improvements in that area. We got stuck on two issues. Does anyone know what Java Advanced Imaging is? Couple people. So this is a, a dependency we have that's not strictly open source. It was originally part of the Java runtime environment. We also are stuck on kind of a funny issue. The EPSG database uses an open data license from literally 1974, and it doesn't look like a modern open data license. Uh, so we're going to actually have to bump that up to the Eclipse Foundation board and you know, get a get out of jail free card to, that says this is okay. Uh, so right now we're, we're kind of waiting for other projects with less dependencies to have a crack at it. Uh, the GeoMesa project started uh, in 2013 with their creation review. Um, their code review started like a month or so later. And it's just... Um, I think we've got our GitHub repository for a longer... Okay, I went through your GitHub history, but maybe that's not quite how it works. Okay, I can edit my slide. Do you know? <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, now, GeoMesa is at the, the head of the incubation queue, just because all the projects couldn't go through at once. It was taking too long. Uh, so currently, they've submitted 125 IP tickets. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went through your stats, and like a third of them are withdrawn for some reason or other. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of them that are withdrawn, there was something early on in the conversation was shared. Okay. It wasn't going to work. Um, since, since the process took so long, uh, we also had situations where different team members participated mm -hmm. in the IP review. So it moved from Chris doing a few to Hunter and then uh, Michael and Wes. And okay. so uh, a few of them were automatically you talked about the automation already. A few of them were automatically closed. OK. So automatically withdrawn because there was no action. Right. So that, the process has been a little unclear to each team, team member as we've kind of gone through it. OK. Yep. Uh, you're getting really close, though, right? Yeah. Yeah? Days, hours, weeks? Yeah, only, only a few more uh, years. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Uh, so, no, Geo I hesitate to say it because I think No, I know. Awesome. I'm just enjoying putting you on the spot. Uh, <laughs> so, GeoGig is next in queue, which is why I'm enjoying putting him on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, GeoGig's uh, got its initial code base. Uh, uh, we initially uh, boundless submitted it in February 2013. Uh, in March, they actually started looking at our code base. Um, Tyler, who's already. Er, er, yeah, Tyler, who's already spoken up, has submitted 45 IP tickets, and we're kind of waiting for, uh, well, for our spot in line to get through. Uh, we have had run into a couple glitches. So one of our glitches is a library called VecMath, which is another one of these dependencies that used to be part of Java, kind of, uh, and we're going to actually have to go back and make a change to the GeoTools library and, uh, and get it to use a different matrix uh, <laughs> Uh, library. The other thing that was awkward for us is when we did our trademark check, um, our original name was not approved by the trademark owner. Uh, so we've had to go, uh, change the name of the project over the course of uh, incubation. The one thing that's kind of awkward for us is GeoGig has hit all its kind of 1.0 feature set. And so we would really like to see the project have wider adoption because we're ready, but we're actually kind of uh, stuck in this incubation process and we need that to complete before we can have our actual final 1.0 release. So if you're waiting to get involved with GeoGig, please don't. In terms of uh, OSGeo incubation, we got kind of a fun story here. So GeoTools uh, started with, uh, with OSGeo in 2006. Uh, I did a quick initial code review, and that went fairly smoothly. Um, we did run into a really weird problem. Every header in GeoTools said, copyright GeoTools PMC. There's a problem with that. That wasn't a legal entity. 
Uh, so we actually had to spend a couple years hunting down every contributor to the project and getting them to sign over their copyright to the OSGEO Foundation. So by the time those couple years had passed, the project is very active and we had to do a second code review. So we graduated with 13 known issues. One thing that's kind of fun here is OSGEO doesn't demand you fix the issues. It only demands that you find them. Uh, it's, uh, that can be very helpful for a project because they can take these issues and say, yeah, here's a known issue. We've got like, uh, you know, some sample data. We don't know where it came from. And uh, a potential participant can either decide to use the project or decide to uh, pitch in and fix the issue. Uh, in terms of GeoTools feedback, we actually had some kind of fun issues. Originally, we were uh, distributing the ARC SDE and the Oracle JDBC drivers. And apparently, we weren't supposed to be doing that. So we ended up pulling all previous releases of GeoTools. Uh, we also had a little bit of fun with the ESPG database. In our case, uh, uh, Frank from OSGEO was able to reach out to the, the EPSG database team and uh, clarify that we were allowed to format shift the database from access or something terrible to HSQL. Um, we did have a little bit of fun, as I said, changing the, all the headers over. Uh, most of our issues were, um, were just simply an issue of time. Uh, we didn't really know where our original test data or sample data had come from just because the project had been alive for so long. So for GeoServer, this is also kind of a fun story. So GeoServer entered incubation in 2009 after Phosphor-G in Sydney. Um, and we did a really prompt initial code review and we actually ran into a few license conflicts. So we, uh, we we talked to the Free Software Foundation, we talked to the Eclipse uh, Foundation. We were able to resolve those over the course of like a year and a half. By then, the development team had kind of lost interest. Um, and uh, I actually hijacked a code sprint in Australia, and we had an army of volunteers, each with GitHub, clicking through every little source file in GitHub and raising an issue for anything that looked suspicious. Um, that was a single day code sprint, and within two weeks, the developers had fixed all the issues identified. So if you really want to get through OSGEO incubation, grab a bunch of volunteers and get it done. Uh, in 2013, we, we were able to graduate. Initially, we were asked to put GeoServer into the OSGEO Foundation kind of as a, a marketing exercise. A lot of potential users or potential customers uh, wouldn't participate with the project as long as it was under the open plans banner. They wanted it in a vendor neutral organization. The moment we entered into incubation, they lost all interest in actually helping out. Uh, so that was kind of a little bit difficult. It's hard to justify this kind of overhead with your employer. And as I said before, we, we ended up having a work party of volunteers. Um, here's kind of the current projects that are in incubation. You can see that we've got a, a few projects here. We've got our newest project. I don't know how to say it, uh, ISTSOS. It's a sensor observation service. It actually uh, joined incubation last week. Um, and then we have projects going all the way back to like GVSIG that entered incubation into 2007. And we really hope they get uh, through it soon. Uh, more interesting is we've got a number of projects that have applied to join OSGEO. And you can see that we've got Pi WPS and its friend GeoMetro that asked in 2009 and we're still waiting for a mentor um, that, who would be willing to welcome them into the organization. Do we have anyone who would like to like mentor Pi WPS? Yahim's a really nice guy. Uh, the other thing we have going on is OSGEO Labs, and this is kind of an informal play area where we're fostering new projects. So you can see a few well-known ones here, such as PG Routing, um, and Pi CSW is currently in OSGEO Labs. So I'm just going to kind of bring this to a close here. What is our plan for location tech in OSGEO? Um, Here's a picture from a, a code sprint we had in Philadelphia in February. And this is an even mix of kind of location tech and OSGEO projects and open source spatial uh, projects, uh, all having a pretty good time near the Rocky statue, because that's what you do in Philadelphia. And we'd really like to see more of this kind of collaboration. 
So OSGEO and Location Tech have a similar mandate of supporting open source spatial. There's every reason for them to work together. Currently, they complement each other. Um, and what's interesting to me is they're attracting different participants. Um, and so the more people we can bring into open source and mapping, the better. Uh, one thing that's interesting is projects can actually belong to both organizations. Uh, both organizations are on good terms. So far we have one project, the site team engine, that is applied to both. And uh, I think it's currently, um, I think its application is still pending for location tech. Other than that, there's a lot of work to do. So uh, let's go. Please help out. Uh, if you'd like to help out, there's uh, an incubator page on the OSGEO website. And there's uh, on the Location Tech website, there's information on how you can become a member. A couple upcoming events in case you want to take part. We've got Phosphor G in Seoul. Uh, there's a Phosphor G regional event in Europe later in the year. And we are going to be setting up a Location Tech tour for 2015. Once again, these events are open to all projects. Any questions? How am I doing for time? I can have a question. Pretty good? Okay. I can do a small dance number. <laughs> a little bit of Charleston here. Okay. Um, one final slide here is I do ask people to evaluate. What's your question? My question is, um, so there was, there was, you sort of referenced an email thread uh, that happened after Foster G Portland. Yeah. Uh, following that, yeah. uh, there would just seem to be some, you know, it's like there's this open channel between OSGEO and Location Tech uh, yeah. in practice and in a lot of people's like minds and hearts, but there also seemed to be a lot of animosity going on, Yeah. sort of just this like territorial fighting, so I'm just wondering if I, there's, was any resolution to that? Because I really saw that email was Peter off and I right. know, people just sort of stopped talking about it or maybe uh, through some other channels like that I think some of that might have been resolved in private emails. Even OSGEO doesn't do everything in public, I guess. Um, from my perspective, it was kind of a wake-up call that even though we've been very active with location tech and very public about what we're doing, uh, it was a little bit different for the OSGEO community once we've arrived. So we've been ramping up uh, location tech since, uh, when was Phosphor G in Denver? 2012? 2011 was when I first started talking to Andrew about this idea. Uh, this idea has been a long time coming, and it's, um, yeah, uh, but it's certainly different having a, a couple of highly visible location tech tours and then co-hosting Phosphor G, which has kind of traditionally been viewed as an OSGEO event, even though it's uh, not. It was originally done by a different group in India. Um, I think another difficulty here is OSGEO has uh, been a nonprofit, but they've struggled to figure out their tax situation. So for the longest time, they weren't in position to accept like um, sponsorship. And uh, Phosphor G has been one of their chief sources of like operational income. Um, but hopefully, now that they've got their uh, their nonprofit status sorted out, they can have a better relationship with sponsors and you know, be a little bit more relaxed about Phosphor G, which is a great outreach tool for everyone. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sounds good. It's an good. Thing, but, yeah. Okay. It's good to see that this event specifically is co-hosted and things like everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The other thing that's happened is um, Andrew has sat in on a few OS OSGO board meetings in order to keep the communication alive. We did have an, uh, an OSGO member, the, um, you know, that little guest membership in the corner. Uh, so OSGO does have a rep that is able to attend the steering committee meetings and uh, collaborate. Okay. Any other questions? And thank you for that. Yeah. Do you see the two organizations sharing with yeah, because they they else. all look around you. Yeah. This uh, conference is us sharing resources. Um, but by all means, I'm kind of evil. I would love to see OSGO projects that are having problems doing their manual code review. 
join Location Tech and get that IP team to do it. And then OSGEO would accept that review? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, it might not be clear why I care about an IP review. The GeoTools project is fairly publicly visible, and we suffer about two, uh, one or two external IP reviews a year from different groups. One thing that's interesting is these groups aren't always comfortable talking to us about the result because that, uh, those, that email or communication might be viewed as uh, legal advice. So by having public IP reviews that we can point to uh, really opens a lot of doors to our open source projects that would otherwise be closed. And you won't be told that that door has been closed. Is that, yeah, okay. Any other questions? Please evaluate this session. You log in to the website. Uh, there's, you know, feedback you can provide. Do people enjoy these kind of community level talks? I'm usually much more comfortable talking about technology, but I do find this important. And uh, yeah, I want to make sure we can get this done. Okay, a few people nodding. It might be because they're awake. Thank you all very much.